time together and we're excited about uh, sharing in your time this morning and us rising early. So we pray even before we begin the call that you be inspired, you be lifted and that you go and manifest. Man, what an amazing time it is. I want to remind you off the top very, very quickly that we've got our Kingdom Agenda Fellowship Gathering of Eagles that is going to be taking place here in the city of Montgomery, Alabama. Um, it's going to be um, April 4th through the 6th, beginning nightly at 7 p.m., uh, 7 p.m. on Thursday, 7 p.m. on, I'm sorry, 6 p.m., 6 p.m. on Thursday, 6 p.m. on Friday, and then, um, am I giving my times right? My mind just went crazy. Yeah, but we'll, we'll be doing that on Thursday and Friday, and then Saturday, we're going to have an intensive. We have a 5 a.m. intercessors call. I'll be leading that particular session We'll talk about intercession, we'll talk about prayer, and then we will go into some kingdom warfare, some kingdom intercession. And then at the beginning about nine, we will um, begin our morning sessions. We got a great lineup of speakers for us. Um, um, Bishop Sylvester Mixon, uh, a Jr., Bishop Anthony Terrell Petway, um, Bishop Rod Robinson, Apostle Xavier Madison, Apostle Joseph Dean, and Dr. Corey Murphy. Man, we're excited about what God's going to do through the Gathering of Eagles this year. It's a convocation. It's a coming together. It's God calling us to the head of a new year. And so we're excited about that. Now today, we're going to get into our discussion. Um, as you know, we started yesterday talking about the first fruit. And for those who are here in the local area, if you'll send us your email, we'll be glad to get our first fruit pamphlet out to you that will give you some direct information on first fruit. Um, if you want to participate in the system of first fruit, okay, uh, I want to remind you again that first fruit is not commanded to the New Testament believer. It's not a command, but it is a system of honor. And I want to show you how that um Honoring these times and seasons, I want to show you how really you've been doing it already to a certain extent, but you don't necessarily have the why behind your what, okay? You don't necessarily have the why behind your what. And so I want to, I want to, good morning, my brother. My brother Larry just came on. Praise God for you, bro. Uh, he's a great voice of wisdom in my life in this season, and we thank God for you, bro. Listen, um, I want to talk about that first fruit again. Now, we started talking yesterday Um about why we sow first fruit. It is, it is just a system by which we continue in God's perpetual system of giving and of guarding the harvest. Um, we've got to understand that, um, or I want us to understand, again, it's not commanded, but we see the principle. We see, as I said, of the Old Testament and New Testament in those relationships, Paul said that the things were, which were written aforetime were for our learning and for our instruction. So we need to understand um, some of these Old Testament principles because everything in the New Testament is directly connected to the Old Testament. And so I want you to understand that. I want you to, to know it and be wise about how we give and why we do what we do, okay? And so um, 
You know, I've been accused sometimes of going a little bit too deep. Well, I want you to understand. Um, I want you to understand. And so um, that's just how I've been built. And if I'm a voice in your life, let's walk together. Let's do this thing. OK, so listen, um, we began to talk yesterday. We read the, the text of Leviticus 23. Uh, Levitic, Leviticus 23, we began to look at it yesterday. We looked at Leviticus 23, verses 10 through 11, and also Leviticus 23, verse 20, which talked about and established the first fruit that was commanded of Israel. Now, remember, it's commanded of Israel to be done perpetually, but it can be practiced by us as Christians because we have a Judeo-Christian root. Everything we have is rooted in Judaism, I promise you, and you're going to see more parallels even as we teach more on this subject. Um, a lot of times we just don't address it, but it's there and it's underlying. Um, examples that I always like to use is the Passover meal was the time and season when God, when, when Christ rather instituted communion. He took, he, he, he took out the bread and wine of the Passover meal because he was the lamb, really remember he was the lamb and the Passover meal involved the lamb and the sacrifice of an unspotted lamb that was drawn from the flock, the firstling. He, 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 he used that principle and he instituted communion. So when you come to the communion table on Sundays, it should be a precious time of bread, meaning the manna and the supply, wine representing Holy Ghost. And then also watch this, in the presence of the lamb, which was the first fruit sacrifice for those who believe. Remember, we looked at the book of Romans. We looked at the book of Romans. And, and when we looked at Romans, we looked at Romans uh, chapters one, I mean, verses one through 32. And we looked at how in verse 16, the Bible read, for if the first root be holy, then the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. So we go back to the root to see the branches between root and branches is, is a growth process from root to trunk to, to uh, the stem all the way out to the branches of the tree. So it's all connected. And what I want us to understand is the connectivity all of, of all of it. I could just give you the surface and let you ride, but I really want you to understand. Remember that Romans passage was about the connectivity between the elected Jews, the Jews who were, who, were, who, were, who were given to kingdom by election and the Gentiles who were given by election. We've been called into relationship to believe in Jesus the Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. Um, we, we've been called into that relationship. And so you watch this. Your kin folks just aren't determined by your bloodline. Your kin folks are also determined by your connection to faith in a bloodline. Because that's how, how, how the writer of Acts could say, watch this, that he's made us all of one blood. One blood. We all believe in Jesus the Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. So every man, no matter what his nationality in the natural has spiritually come to one family in Christ and we believe in Jesus the Christ who is our big brother, our intercessor in this season and is our total redemption. So I want to talk about this first fruit. Again, I want to build this bridge so you understand the root of things, where it comes from. It comes from the Old Testament. Again, it's an Old Testament system commanded of the Jews but embraced by Christians. Now, we know by grace, in the dispensation of grace, you can sow first fruit at any time. You really can. You can give a first fruit offering at any time. But there are some commanded times and seasons in Scripture when God says he does not want you to appear before him empty-handed. He does not want you to appear before him empty-handed. Okay? And that, that is something that we want to pay attention to. Watch this. He says, watch this. In the book of Deuteronomy, I need someone making notes for me, if you will. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, I want you to go back and read this. Deuteronomy 16. When you read Deuteronomy 16, you will see the process whereby God sets the feasts in order. And there, um, and there in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 16, 
Watch this. You will find a couple of verses. And there's one I want to point out very, very quickly because I'm not going to go into the whole study on Deuteronomy 16 right now in this session. But I do want to cover this one verse. Deuteronomy 16, 16 says, three times in a year shall all the males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose in the feast of unleavened bread in the feast of weeks and in the feast of tabernacles. So he says there's three times the feast of unleavened, of unleavened bread, the feast of weeks and the feast of tabernacles and he shall not appear before the Lord empty. He says to his, his chosen people, it's three times I want you to get together and don't you neglect to bring me a seed because I want to do something big and miraculous. I want to bless you, but I need you to give me something to work with. Watch this. Verse seven, verse 17, Deuteronomy 16 and 17. Please make note of these. Deuteronomy 16 and 17. Every man shall give as he is able according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he hath given thee. So he says, watch this, watch this, and you got to see this. He says, I'm going to give you grace within this command because I'm going to supply for you and I want you to give me a portion of it back. I Listen, I'm going to give you grace because I'm going to supply for you and I just want you to give me a portion of it back. My mentor, my pastor, Hart Ramsey says, watch this. He says, God never asks you for a part unless he has supplied you a whole. I want to shout right now. He says, listen, he has taught me this. He said this. God never gives you a part unless I ask you for a part unless he has supplied you with a whole. He only asks you for a portion to sanctify the whole. You got to see this. So he says, watch this. I want you not to come before me empty handed. But when you appear, I want you to come with something for me to work with. Give me something to help you. Give me something to bless your life. Sanctify the whole of your harvest by giving me this inkling of it. Now, let's 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 begin to talk about the first fruit a little bit more specifically. Remember, we talked about this. In Leviticus uh, 23, uh, we, we, we read those verses, but I want to I want to throw some more scripture at you real quick to help you see, because what I want you to see is the principle that we're practicing. Watch this is the foreshadow of the resurrection. What, what, the reason I want us to, 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 to grab hold of this system of honor by the first fruit is because truthfully, what we're doing is. We are honoring a resurrected life in Christ. Let me give you some proof text real quick. Watch this. Let's go to the book of 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, the 15th chapter. And I want to I want to look at um, verses um, and I'm, and I'm going to tie this historically so you can see this. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verses 20 through 34 is my context. I'm not going to read it all, but verses 20 through 34 is the context. Watch this. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verse 20. But now is Christ risen. Watch this. This word risen means that he has, he has arose from the grave. Now, if you notice this, this is going to sound a lot like a particular season in Ooh. our lives. Watch this. And, and But now is Christ risen from the dead and become, watch this, the first fruits of them that slept. He has risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. So watch this. And I want you to study the context of 1 through 34. I can't get it all in today. But what, what this is referring to is the resurrection of Jesus the Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. This is showing you the resurrection of Christ. But notice in this context, Paul, 
who is writing under the Holy Spirit. And this is, and let me say this to you real quick too. I, I was talking, I was talking with my son Pierre, Pierre Watkins, and, and I'm telling you, sometimes God gives that cat so much revelation it blows my mind. Uh, watch this. Um, um the if, if the Bible watch this is the inspired word of God. And Paul says to Timothy that all scripture that has been given has been written by the Holy Spirit. So what the process is, is that the Holy Spirit empowers a man with revelation from on high. He has been with the Father. He empowered man to script what he has written. So watch this. When it comes to the word of God, we got to understand the Holy Spirit is the only power and intelligence that has been consistent from Genesis to Revelation. He used different men, but the Holy Spirit is the only consistency in the writing and scribing of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. So watch this. Since Holy Spirit knew this, we got to understand that his mind has not changed. He gave us different revelation at different times, but we got to see the consistencies through scripture. Now watch this. When we talk about Christ being risen, he is acknowledged as first fruit. Notice here, we have a Holy Spirit, a Jewish convert to Christianity being Paul, a Jewish savior, a Jewish savior who has who has um, initiated the life of Christianity or the Christ life, okay? And so what you see is the consistency and the connectivity of the teaching that we should not ignore. Again, let me let me give you this caveat. I'm not pushing you to law. I'm pushing you to see the connect connectivity of Christ concealed Old Testament and Christ revealed New Testament. Because the same principles are are throughout scripture, but we have to see them in their time and dispensation. You watch this. You don't see Jesus in the Old Testament in by way of the word J E S U S or the Hebrew side Yeshua Y E S H U A. You don't see that in the Old Testament, but what you do see is the bread, the manna. Okay, you you do see you do see the Ark of the Covenant. You do see symbolisms that point you to the reality of Christ. That's why Jesus could say, I am the bread of life. In the, in, in, in the Exodus, the bread of life was the manna. What is this? In the New Testament, the bread of life is Jesus. Oh, God. When Jesus says, I'm the word, in the Old Testament, we saw where the word came to Jeremiah. The word came to Isaiah. The word came to Habakkuk. They received word in Old Testament, but then the word took on flesh in the New Testament dispensation of the Gospels, and now the word is being written on our hearts in the Old Test in the New Testament. You've got to see the connectivity through the scriptures. Now watch this. Paul says, thank you, Sister Brigham, for posting those scriptures. Paul says that, that Yeshua, Jesus, is the first fruits of them that slept. Now, what is the first fruits? In this context, the, 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 the first fruits is the aparche. The aparche. It means the offering of the firstlings or the first fruits. It's the first thing. It's, it's, the, it's the superiority and excellence of that first seed. It is the first portion that is used to produce something in the earth. It's the first. It's the preeminence. So watch this. There is no resurrection for the believer lest there be a resurrection for Jesus, of Jesus Christ. That's why Paul could say, and you got to see this. He's ushering us into Christianity, but he has not totally abandoned the Jewish paradigm. He says, watch this, that Christ is the first fruits of them that slept. Paul said the same power that raised Jesus from the dead will one day raise us. We're the, listen, we are the harvest and he is the first fruit. 
The first fruit sanctifies the harvest. So when we practice first fruits, we're doing it in type and shadow of the resurrected life. We got to see this. We got to see this. We're doing it in, in we're doing it in honor of what Christ has done for us on the cross. He is the first fruits of them that slept. So watch this. That's why we don't have to fear death. We don't have to fear dying because we know, watch this, that's just a season and we are awaiting another harvesting. That's why the redemption, listen, the redemption is a harvesting of souls. That's why Paul could say, watch this, that, that those of us, uh, beloved, I, I don't want you to be ignorant, but those of us who die in Christ, that's why we got, listen, y'all. Listen, y'all, please, and, and hear me. I don't mean to be disrespectful in any way, but we got to let the dead bury the dead. If if your if your your mother, your father, your, whoever you were connected to, your loved one died in Christ, then you should be celebrating that and not living a life of mourning. We got to we got to get this, and the only way we'll be able to understand that is to get our revelation of understanding that we're only going to be in this life for a little bit, but there is someone who was the first fruit of our salvation and his name was Jesus the Christ. Now watch this. Let me tie some more things together for you so you can see why I want you to practice this principle of first fruit. The first fruit, remember I just gave you three seasons when the Lord said, don't appear before him empty handed. Three seasons when he said, I want you to make sure that you bring me an offering, O men of Israel, O women of Israel. I want you to make sure that you do this and you do it according to how I blessed you. What were those three times again? He said, I want those three times to be the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks, and the Feast of Tabernacles. So that is Pesach. Watch this. That is Shabbat, Shabbat, or Shabbat. And then that is Sukkot. Those are the three Jewish seasons that are in this, that are in his time, in that time. Now watch this. Let me give you some comparisons so you see this. During this time, during this time of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which we're about to enter into in just a little bit, on the Jewish side, it's called the Feast of Unleavened Bread, okay? Or Hag Hamazot, okay? It's, it's or, or, or Pesach. Passover, that's that they happen right there in the same season. Passover is one day. The Feast of Unleavened Bread then is a seven day celebration that comes right off the heels of it. And I'll give you scripture reference if you want to see Passover. Look at Leviticus 23. We're back in Leviticus 23. Look at verses four and five. If you want to see unleavened bread, Leviticus 23, verses six and eight. So they're in the same passage where God deals with us on bringing in the first fruit. It's all in the same, it's all in the same passage. He wants you to understand that, okay? So it's God setting all this in order. So watch this. When we talk about the first fruits itself, it happens at a particular time. The first one, the first fruit offering, the old corn first fruit offering that we give, we're gonna give this year on April 7th, and we just honor it by way of the system. It's not on the exact date, but watch this. It's on, it actually happens um, on April 7th for us this year, okay? But but what it is, watch this, when you start looking at the days, when you start looking at the days on the calendar, then you will find out, you will find out that, that all of this happens in a cycle. Watch this, it's a continuous cycle. So we're going to sow our old corn on the first fruit uh, uh, April 7th, but then there's another special day on April 16th, I mean, I'm sorry, April 21st. Now, what is April 21st? Does anybody on this line know what April 21st is? Come on now. Y'all, uh, y'all, y'all, I'm, I'm hoping somebody got some, got, know, know when April, what, if you don't know what April 21st is, you ain't, you don't go to church. It's Easter Sunday morning. <coughs> it's Easter Sunday, folks. April 16th, I mean, April 21st, it's Easter Sunday morning. Now watch this. That's from our perspective. From the Jewish perspective, it's Nisan 16, the 16th day of Nisan. Now, 
Historically, watch this. Guess when the resurrection of Christ took place? Nisan 16. He was the first, the very first, the, let me say, first in priority. He was the fulfillment of the system from Old Testament coming into New Testament. So watch this. We have the Old Testament system of practicing first fruit. We have the resurrection and the fulfillment of the law of that system. And now we get to practice it by grace. So watch this. This is why I stress to us, even when it comes to first fruit, don't get caught up on, it, on missing a day or missing the exact hour or being legalistic and thinking you're going to get damnation because you don't do it at the right day or the right time. No, we want you to see it in shadow, but not in law. So we tell you, bring an offering. You know, we tell you, bring an offering, bring a first fruit, set something aside for God. Because what you're doing is you're practicing and you're seeing the foreshadowing of the resurrected life that came by way of Calvary. He, he rose on 16 Nisan. That was when the resurrection took place. This year, that day, and watch this. Let me ask you this question just so you understand this when it comes to time and season, Jewish time and season. Is Easter celebrated the same time every year? It's a different day every year. It's a different day every year because it's flowing just like the Jewish calendar. It's a different day every year. And so the celebration is important, but I want you to understand the why. So we give our first fruit. We give our first fruit. We sow seed because God commanded in these three seasons, I don't want you to not sow. I want you to bring me something. It, it was on the 16th of Nisan. So what you do, watch this, the way it works is on the 14th of Nisan, you, uh, you set something aside, you hold it and you sow something on the 16th. And so that's the way it operates. Okay. And so we want to make sure that we, we do that and we honor that based on God's timeline. Okay. And so we can do it. It's by grace. Again, it does not have to be um, commanded. It does not have to be um, law and legalistic but you want to sow during this time. Why? Because God promised, I want to do something. I want to make some moves in your life based on this, on this process. So let's practice it from the place of honor and watch what God's going to do. Now, I don't know about you, but for those of us who participated in First Fruit the last few years, it's been a good principle for us to practice. We've enjoyed it. Uh, we've been blessed by it, and I believe that our covenant and our financial wisdom, our mindset is getting stronger, even as we practice these principles. So I'm excited for you, man. I pray we had a great session today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get out of here. My time is up, so I'm going to ask if Mother Ma would go ahead and lead us into prayer at this time. Thank you, Lord. Father God, I come to you right now thanking and praising you for this a new day, a day I've never seen before. You've allowed us to come before you to hear the teaching of your word. Lord God, I thank you, glory to God, that we're able to come before you early in the morning and receive the word of God from the man of God that you selected to teach us the word, the ways of you, the way you would have us to go. We open up our understanding and to let us know how blessed we are to come before you and receive your word. Lord God, I thank you and I pray you for everyone on this line. I thank you, glory to God, that we want to know more. We want to do it your way, glory to God. Hey, Facebook fam, listen, we thank you for joining us this morning. Don't forget, gathering of, gathering of Eagles, go out there, get registered, sow a seed, be a part of the conference. Um, if you can't be here in person, sow a seed and support the conference. I promise you, you will see, you will see increase off of your seed sowing. So we thank God for you. Um, we thank God for you being with us. Remember, as always, be inspired, be lifted, and let's go manifest. What's in your hands? What is God ordained for it? Are you going to take action and what's it going to produce? I promise you, let's get it done. God's got you. Have a great day. We love y'all.